sample books that you often get in furnishing shops. Now in the previous video I showed you how easy it was to remove the paper with an iron. You just do it in stages and it comes off really easily but for me it only worked on about half of the sample pieces of fabric. So with the other half I experimented with soaking them just for like a minute in a solution of lukewarm water and washing powder. And for half of those, making it a quarter, um, that worked really well and the paper just fell away really easily. Now, for the rest of them, I did this interesting concoction, which is really easy to do. It was lukewarm water, that washing powder stuff, just regular non-bio washing powder, but I put an extra ingredient in there. Nail varnish remover, just a couple of caps, put in the water, and those tricky ones, the paper just fell away. Now, to be honest, it did slightly compromise the fabric a little bit, but I'm using seriously silk fabric, which you would never use with washing powder. You would get it dry cleaned. So it could have been because of that. So make sure you experiment when you do it. Now, before I show you my design process for what I think I'm going to be making with my fabric, I'm just going to do a really quick demo of honestly how easy it is to get the paper off in water and washing powder. Bucket of water, look I've got about that much, whatever that is, a cap full of uh, just regular stuff I'd use to wash my clothes. So that mix is much more concentrated than you'd usually do for this amount of water. I'm just slushing it around. The water's, you know, it's almost cold. It's not quite cold. And then get your fabric. So I've got one hand with nail varnish on, one without, because of that acetone mixture. Um, this is silk, remember, so you're not, you're not gonna have so many problems as me, I think. And just put it in the water. So just put it in the water. I know this, you probably think this is ridiculous me showing you this, but I don't think you'd believe it if you didn't see it. So I'm gonna leave that to soak in the water. I don't know, it only needs a few minutes. I think basically what you have to do is make sure that the paper becomes completely sodden. I think that's all really. So I'm going to put that to one side. Whilst that's doing its thing over there, which usually takes just a minute really, I'm going to tell you about my new idea for the garment that I'm going to make out of those fabric samples. So I felt like because it's such special fabric, I really want to do something special, which I know it's obvious. Now I could just stitch them all together and make that top, the tie bow top, pussy bow top, a jacket, but I think, because I keep changing my mind, I want to make a kind of, as long as I can really, but I probably can't do it very long, an A-line, slightly puffer, quilted, gilet, sleeveless, Thing, actually very much like this except 
A-line. I want to do really deep armholes and faux fur around the armholes. And I thought, if what I make, so this is like this, but I'm going to do it a bit more A-line. If what I make doesn't have sleeves, then I probably can make a slightly longer thing, maybe. So if I take it off, so look, can you see that? It's got like really deep armholes and this faux fur stuff. So I'm going to use fabric that is already quilted and that will become the inside and then the outside will be all my patchwork. Oh, we nearly said the design name then. <laughs> Special designer um, patchwork fabric. So let me see if I can pull it all together so you can get a better idea. So I haven't decided um, which of these two fabrics I'm going to use. This is a bit more shiny and it's a single sided quilt and obviously the horizontal lines or I might use this crisscross squares diamond diamond <laughs> I think they call it so that's the wrong side diamond quilted fabric but I'm just going to lay it out just to kind of give you an idea of how it will look so basically I guess in the end it's going to be um, a reversible thing well, that's what I'm aiming for. Now, oh, it's so hard to do things sort of randomly. I can't do it. <laughs> I, I always want to kind of think about it too much. Anyway, one thing I think, I think, um, I want the, the, the patches, when I cut them, I want them to be um, on, on the cross. The bit that I'm not sure about is whether I'm going to make two of the same garment, bag it out with this fabric that I make, and then, um, you know, uh, don't know what the word is, uh, key it to the quilty fabric by stitching lines the same as the other side, or if I'm going to do it by hand and do like they do with those Indian quilts, I don't know yet but one thing that I do want to show that I think is going to look amazing is when I do the fur around the armhole so first of all I love how you know this quilted stuff is going to peep from the other side and then when I wear it on the quilted side all this gorgeousness will peep out that's quite exciting I get excited about things like that I'm going to try and give the impression to you now of an armhole Go away, you. Of an armhole with, look at that. Oops, <laughs> I probably got it the wrong way. But look, an armhole with fur going around it, but not as wide as that. It will be narrow like the one on my jacket that I just showed you, minus the center tape. So I'll be cutting the fur in the way that I show you in our video of how to cut and sew with fur. I'm going to create haberdashery by making a strip, you know, maybe 10 centimetres, 4 inches, something like that wide, using our video on how to cut and sew fur. I'll attach it to some bias binding. And that will mean I can then roll it over like that. I can do a video on this. And then it will just be the bias binding that will get trapped between the two layers, which hopefully, well, I know because I've done it before um, when I upcycle this jacket, um, it will just seamlessly poke out around the arm. Now, I was really hoping that I'd be able to use the, um, 
the patchwork fur from our, our video to put around the arm. Wish I could, oh, but I really think it would be too much. I've already got a lot going on with all that, um, with all the different coloured fabrics. So have you seen our patchwork fur video? It's definitely worth watching for how to cut it and how to sew it. Now, before we go and have a look at how the um, soaking fabric's going, which really didn't need this long, I just wanna give you a tip that came from Lucy, who's in the middle of making a coat out of um, floral linen fabric samples. Now, I said to her, I'm really struggling with all this randomness. You know, I, I feel really bad because the designer in the pattern books puts the fabrics together that they wanted to, to sort of go together. And then when you break all of that out up, oh, it really, I really feel a resistance. So she said her way of coping with all the different fabrics was to put them all together in the same color. So she put all her blues together, all her reds together, all her greens together and all her yellows. And then when she made her garment, she did it kind of like color blocking. So this side was green, this side was, I don't know, red, all of the back was blue and the sleeves were yellow. And I thought that was genius. Right, back to the bucket. So remember, this was simply, look, <laughs> this was simply um, just washing stuff. Uh, clothes washing liquid and lukewarm water which actually became quite cold now look I'm not even going to do anything just so you can see look it's just falling off it just falls away completely falls away I don't need any skill I don't need to do anything so there's the paper and there's the fabric I didn't have to scrub it I didn't have to do anything I just wanted to show you that so you could actually see before your eyes that it's effortless. So don't be scared of removing the paper from the back of those fabrics if they can be washed and if they can be ironed. And if they can't, try that little trick of putting a bit of acetone or nail varnish remover into the mixture as well. Thank you so much for watching. We are actually going to do other videos as well. And I think it's going to take me a while to make my quilted Gucci-esque gilet. But when it's done, in a few videos time, I'll definitely share it with you. Thank you for watching. Bye.